Well, hi everybody, Matt here, and we're gonna take a kind of a start to finish look at a photo I took recently. I was uh, took a trip to Charleston, South Carolina. Um, lots of the the flowers were blooming. It was just a good good time to go. Uh, this was toward the end of March, and um, and so I I got a photo at the Magnolia Plantation here. You really can't get in. I think if you're a member, you can get in before sunrise or right around sunrise. I'm not a member, and I think it's only for local people. Anyway, so and, and even if I got in earlier, by the time I found this, it was my first time there. The The light had gotten a little more harsh. So I can do things like I can bring up my exposure or my my shadows here, and I can pull back on my highlights. And I think I think that helps, you know, I think it kind of, you know, helps take the contrastiness away from the photo. I could probably do some micro adjustments here on that exposure too. Um, once I do, I usually do, you know, shadows and highlights a lot of times first for my landscapes. Um, and then I kind of micro adjust the exposure to make the whole thing brighter or darker. But I really, I can't quite get where I want. There's a couple of things that are, that are kind of affecting me here. So one, I think, uh, I think the, the bottom, all the, you know, the, you got the bright light here and you got some of the shadows. I did try to take my graduated filter. I'll just walk you through my thought process, which was, I tried to take the graduated filter, maybe bring the exposure down a little bit and try to bring that down. That looked a little too dark for me, kind of artificial. Um, I even turned range masking and I went into luminance and I thought, well, you know what? I, what I can do is I can, I can pull out that darkening from the dark areas and just leave it in the bright areas. But that to me started to get a little bit too flat. Like it lost, it lost the contrast down there when I started to do that. So once I kind of exhaust all of those, those possibilities here, I kind of figure it's a time for Photoshop where I can do some really specific channel based selections and uh, color based selections. Um, before I do that, I'll also give you one, another little workflow tip. I do want to mess with the color a little bit on this one. I love the profiles that are built into Lightroom here in this profile section. Of course, you have to have the, the latest version of Lightroom Classic to be using this. But I love having these profiles. And I thought the standard one, this was before, this is after. I thought it just kind of flattened things out, which was a good thing in case of this contrasty photo. I thought it just kind of flattened things out, opened up things a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's a, it's a camera matching profile, which means I have to do it on a raw or a DNG file. I would have to do it before I went to Photoshop. Those would not be available to me after I came back into Lightroom from Photoshop. So that's why I decided to do it now. Okay. Anything else I can do later on when I'm done with Photoshop. So let's take a photo edit in, jump over into Photoshop. From here, job number one, uh, job number one for me is is the bright spot. It's just, it's got an overall brightness. You see a lot of hot spots, hot little white spots all around the photo. So a channel based selection and it, in a way, yeah, it's called a luminosity mask. Forget about what it's called luminosity masking or, or not. Luminosity masking is just a, it's just a selection. It's a channel based selection. So forget about the buzzword for it. We're going to come over here to our channels palette. And uh, I'm going to hold down the command or control key and I'm going to click on the RGB channel, right? That's going to put a selection around the luminance of the photo. And then I go down here and I click on that little channel that says save selection as a channel, that little button down here. And what that does when I deselect is it saves basically the luminance of the photo. So remember what's, what's white is what's selected. So all these little white areas are, are basically going to be selected if I try to do something to this. Here's the thing. I know from trying this out, I know from experience that it's not, it's not, it's, it's too much. There's too much white here. I was happy with the sky. I was happy with a lot of spots in the photo. It's really the really bright stuff. So we can refine this channel based selection. What we do is we command or control click on the new one. Okay puts a selection around. It's the same selection we got before. I could have just done it up here. And then what we do is we press command option shift, All right? So command option shift. And then you'll notice the, the hand cursor gets a little X in the middle. We click that refines our selection. All right. 
And then we can come down here and we can click on that save selection as a channel. And that gives us now, as I click on it, now, if you look at it, it's a much darker selection and the, there's not quite as much white inside of here. All right. So I have a more refined selection. Okay. It's basically, I took it from a lot to a little bit less. So from here, now I can do something with this selection. So the next thing that I would do is remind you that if you like these videos, please subscribe. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. How do you like that segue there? Uh, I've got a YouTube and a Facebook page, and I would love it if uh, you would subscribe to either one of those places where you happen to be watching the video. All right. Now, important thing to remember about doing these channel-based selections. Once you're done making the selection, of course, make sure you come up here and uh, deselect. Click on the RGB channel. If you just click on here and you go back to layers, it's going to look weird. It's not going to work click on the RGB channel to target it. Then you can go back over to layers and do what, what not. But the one thing we want to do here is put a selection back around this. So we press command or control and just click on that. That has now put a selection around that channel based selection that we created a couple of minutes ago. We head over here to layers, a good toning adjustment for me is going to be curves. I can do a lot with curves. So I'm going to go up here to the adjustments panel. If you don't see it, make sure you go down here to windows, uh, window adjustments. And, uh, of course I closed it doing that. So, uh, we come over here, we click on the curves adjustment. It's automatically taken that selection as a layer mask, because that's what I had selected when I went in here. So essentially what we have now is we have a layer that is targeting only the really bright stuff in the photo. That's it. So as I start to move this curve around, you can see I'm not manipulating the whole photo. I'm just manipulating part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down a little bit. All right. Uh, it's not really going to do anything up here, but I can always kind of raise that because I don't want it to affect the dark parts of the image. I just want it to affect that area where all the information is really. So now you can see I can kind of control the brightness and it's really is it's bringing down let's zoom in a little bit it really is bringing down the contrastiness of some of those brightly kind of lit and colored um plants and flowers and trees back here okay so that was one uh the next thing i thought is well there's still a lot of contrast going on down here with the greens and as is always the case there's 25 ways to do the same thing inside of photoshop one of the ways that I like to select colors is, uh, is I'll head up here to the select menu. Now there's a key thing you have to do first, click on the background layer. All right. I don't want to be on the, I don't want to be on the, the mask when I'm doing this click on the background layer, because that's what Photoshop is going to be using as its reference. So then we can go to select color range inside a color range. Uh, I'm going to go up here to sampled colors and I'm just going to click down here in the grass. I have a little bit of a fuzziness slider too. I can kind of wiggle that back and forth depending on where you want to target. You know, I really want to target the grass. I don't want to go too far and too deep into the scene back here. So I'm not going to go too high with it, but somewhere right around 120 for this photo. And it's going to be different for every photo. You have to decide how much do you really want to make darker or brighter. And then when you're done, just click OK. So now you're going to get another selection. We're going to head back up to curves. Remember when I click on this curves button over here, it's going to automatically create a curves adjustment layer. And it's going to have a layer mask that is going to take the form of that selection that I just had. So basically now I have a mask masking this curves layer. That's telling me it's just going to affect the area that I had selected, which is kind of the greens inside of here. So as I move this up and down, so now I have control over those greens and it's a nice feathered natural type selection. Okay. And that's the key with all of these channel based selections and even going into select color range, we get more of a natural type of a selection here. So now I can pull back on some of those greens here and then even maybe push up a little bit, gives a little bit more contrast, but still takes, takes some of the heat off. All right. If you want to see before and after we can turn that off and then on subtle change guys, but it's these little subtle changes that make the difference in the photo that's before that's after, but 
it's the it's the tiny little things of bringing down some of the bright spots, bringing down some of the colors. These are the things that that help you craft your photo into a little bit more about what you saw when you were there and what you remember about when you were there. I don't remember it being a very contrasty scene. We all know our camera does not photograph what we see. Um, it doesn't have the dynamic range for that. So it's our job to come in here and kind of pull down on some of these things. All right, pull down on some of those bright spots. Again, pull down on some of those green areas. And now we can start to get some nice natural type selections here. Okay. Uh, from here, when we're done, we just go to file. We go down here to save. It's going to save the image. And when we hop back over into Lightroom in a, just a second here, we're going to see we have a new copy of that. Um, it's now, you know, uh, Photoshop saved it as a TIFF file, which is just fine. And it's a perfectly good copy of the photo. It's not in any less quality or anything. And we can kind of finish if we wanted to. I, have, I can do a little bit more shadows. Uh, I can warm this up a little bit. I did a good color adjustment in the beginning. I think when we went to that camera matching profile, we kind of did a color adjustment. So I'm not going to do too much here. Um, we could add a creative profile to this. I almost always go through some of these artistic profiles because I, I think they just look so cool. Like I think artistic number two looks kind of neat. I think number four looks kind of neat. So, you know, it's, it's a nice finishing touch. Um, I would probably go down here, add a little bit of a vignette because why not? All right. Um, you know, I'm not much for sharpening uh, and all that stuff. It was a, it was taken on a tripod. I, uh, it was a, a in sharp in focus shot. So sharpening is not going to do that much for me, but I usually will come in here and kick it up to 70, 80%, which is just fine. I, I, I literally never spend more than 10 seconds on my sharpening, um, here while I'm on, on my photos here. So we can finish up with that, but let's go take a look. Let's click reset on the original one. So we can see that is our before photo. And that is our after photo. So once again, before, after, as I look at it, I might want to come in here with just a little bit of clarity and that'll just give it a little bit of contrast things. I think things got a little bit flat and that clarity will just kind of boost the contrast there. We could do it with the contrast slider. I happen to like clarity a little bit better. Okay, folks, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for stopping by and I will talk to you again real soon.